All right, guys, I've gotten behind a little bit on this rod and reel project. I'm about a week behind. I decided to go back and redo these wraps on this rod. I wasn't real happy with how dark they came out before. I've redone all these and I've actually changed the way I did the trim on the, on the end of this wrap. I redid all the guide wraps too and I redid this first one with that similar trim to what you see on this end. Then on all the, the remaining wraps I did just a single trim band. So I'm not sure how well that will show up on video but there's just a single thread that's trim on each of the remaining guide wraps and I think that this looks a whole lot better than it did before I used a metallic thread instead of a, a regular thread and it doesn't absorb the epoxy as much and I also used a color protectant on these and on the tip section instead of wrapping it like I did originally I decided to use clear epoxy over the tip I think it looks a little cleaner that way it doesn't look as bulky on the tip really nice old glass rod and the colors on it are just awesome to me very nice of course there's the penny in the end um, as I showed on the original video for the rod real quick about these wine wine corks um, for the grips I, I know it looks a little different because normally you have cork rings that are much narrower you can still see where they're put together on the wine bottle cork it, you know your corks a little bit bigger or quite a bit bigger so it looks different but that cork is so dense and thick and there's so few voids it's really high quality cork and I really like that stuff. I know it looks different, but man, the quality difference is just amazing. And again, I'm, I'm not a professional. I do this as a hobby. One thing I'll just point out here, um, this is where, this is spinning rod, so of course, reel hang upside down. So you want your good looking side to be on the top. And then where there's transitions and things is on the bottom. So when you're looking at the rod from the top, you don't really see that little area there where that wrap is tied together you know it's thread you have to put it together somewhere so you put it together where it's the least visible when you're fishing it at least that's the way I do it if that was on the top you'd see it all the time where you're fishing but you know that looks really clean there and then you can see where you know the threads pulled back under here where it starts and things like that that's just kind of how it goes you're gonna have a transition area where things are put together and so you if you keep that on the on the bottom side while you're fishing you don't really see it on this video i'll actually be redoing the reel but i just wanted to give a little explanation as to why i've gotten behind on it i'm doing this in my spare time of course time's kind of limited with the holidays coming up but i will get this out to somebody soon uh, I'm going to do the reel next and on this video actually I'm going to be putting the reel back together I mean I do want to try to fish it one time uh, just to see how it handles because I think I know the rod is really nice hopefully the reel will be as nice as the rod hopefully somebody will like this rod and hopefully the reel turns out as nice as the rod did or, or at least comparable I'm going to go inside now and get started on putting that reel back together all right just a couple of quick notes here um the original line roller was cut um, the line had wore through it and the bell wire was in really bad shape so i replaced it with a different one from a another reel that was made in a real similar manner the wire shaped a little different but it was basically the same size i didn't really have to do anything to that uh, i had an older reel that was in terrible shape but this was all still good so i replaced it with that and and used the line roller too um, the reason the line roller on the original was cut was because they did a poor job in early japanese reels of getting some of the small details right their overall products were pretty good quality. Uh, the gears, uh, they used good materials. The gears were cut well. 
things like that. The castings are great. Uh, usually you can see a little bit of a of a flaw in, inside the spool there maybe. Uh, you can see it, I don't know. But there's a flat spot in the spool in a couple of sides. Uh, a little rough on the casting on, on that. But you know, the bodies, the clean lines, nice seam lines and things like that. The gears are nice, nicely cut. Uh, good quality materials, metals and things. Uh, but some of the little details they missed were things like the line rollers on a lot of the early Japanese reels they don't move <laughs> and it's just a, a bad design on their part uh, it was fixed later on uh, I noticed some older reels that I've got that were made by companies like Olympic uh, out of Japan uh, they they started getting it right at some point but some of the earlier ones the line rollers don't move on them uh, this one doesn't either and it didn't on the original reel but it hadn't been used as much so the, the line roller wasn't cut what I'd recommend doing if you fish this a lot is to back this nut off every once in a while, maybe every few trips out, back it off a little and turn that turn that roller a little bit and then tighten it back down. Um, if you're not really going to use this a whole lot, maybe just want to fish it a couple of times and and then you know make it a, it it make a nice looking display. I think uh, you know the rod and reel together. Something like that, you know, you don't really have to worry about it. But if, if you do use this, I'd only use mono. I wouldn't use braid in it uh, because the line roller doesn't move. And I would, I would rotate its position periodically. And it's just a flaw in the design. Uh, they smash down tight between the bell wire and the nut uh, in, the, in the bracket that it's mounted to. Both reels were made the same way. They were two totally different companies. And I've seen that a lot in the early Japanese reels where the line rollers are pretty much non-functioning as far as the rolling aspect goes. They do fine for guiding your line back onto your spool, but they don't, they don't move like they should. But I just wanted people to be aware of that. Um, I had to do some work to this, so I did this off camera the finish was coming off here and I don't know if that'll show up or not but this area you can tell is brass uh, I believe this wire itself is actually stainless steel on this one on the other one that was on the on the reel originally it was actually steel and it was in terrible shape the chrome had come off uh, in several spots and it would have really wore online quickly and I could have polished it out and things, but there would be a problem with corrosion there. So I thought this would be a better way to go. It'll solve two problems. I can change the line roller and and get a, a non-corroding bell wire on here. And I would not use these in salt water personally anyway. Um, I don't think they were really meant for that. And they're not going to hold up all that great for it. So that's what I've done with this. So this has already been reassembled. Uh, the lever, the spring, and the screw here was all put back in. This arm, and this you can see now is brass on the outside edge, and it's still got its chrome plating on the on the flats of the nut. Um, but the chrome was pitted and coming off here, so I just polished it all off and polished that brass up there. Kind of like I did on, on this bell wire. So anyway, that's that. The other thing I had to fix was the uh, original handle was broken. This was the original grip and you can see where it was broke off there. Um, so what I did was I found another one that was a similar size. There's a little bit of play in it there. Shouldn't, shouldn't hurt anything. Um, actually, it might make it move a little smoother than in, than the way this one was turning. Uh, slightly different profile, um, but similar shape. I thought it would be a good fit. This came off a different reel that I had that was a parts reel, uh, and it spins a lot smoother than the original did, uh, and the plastic was in good shape. Uh, it, I didn't polish it or anything. I just cleaned it. So that's back together now and that will spin freely. And I'm going to also put a little oil down in here to, to keep it from squeaking or anything. Sometimes these old handles squeak when you turn them. And if you just put a drop of oil down in here, 
and then spin it back and forth a few times to get it that shaft coated that will take some of that squeakiness out of there so so I fixed that fix this now we're ready to put the whole thing back together I'll speed it up somewhat and when I get it put back together I will come back and talk a little bit about the reel itself Okay, so just a little bit about this reel. Um, first of all, it's pretty smooth. Uh, for a reel that has absolutely zero ball bearings in it, I'd say it turns very freely. Um, there's not any kind of binding on cranking or anything like that. I mean, it spins pretty easily. Uh, of course it's not friction you know there's more friction to it being bushings instead of bearings but I think it cleaned up nice looks pretty good I think it will make a nice complement reel to the rod and I think it would look really nice on display or something like that uh, I kind of like the it's kind of got a glare on it but I kind of like the polished side plate um, the paint was in such bad condition on that side plate I didn't have a whole lot of options on it I could have either painted it again or or done something like this and I kind of like the polish on this side it kind of goes with the hardware on the rotor and the um, the chrome plated aluminum handle and the little uh, lever that does your anti-reverse here I like the sweep on the on the leg of the reel. I think that's pretty awesome. I like the way that looks. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's going to make a good reel. And of course, you know, you can't close the bail by hand like you can on modern reels. Uh, you could flip it like that, but that's a lot of work. Uh, so, you know, it's the easiest just to start cranking to get the bail to flip over. Um, you know, the drag is is surprisingly smooth for a leather drag, drag washers. It's got a three drag washer stack. It's got a metal washer and then two leathers together um, I'm not sure why it was put together that way I'm assuming that I put it back I, I put it back the way that it was I'm assuming nobody had taken it apart before um, but anyway I, the gearing on it is just basically a spur gear turn on its side uh, but yeah you can feel a little bit of the gear uh, a, a little bit of the gear meshing in the handle uh, it's not near as smooth as the old worm gear drives, which you don't really see anymore, except for on very expensive reels. Um, but my overall impression of the reel itself would be, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy one. Uh, but if if I came across one that was in good shape, I might would think about picking one up if it was just a few bucks or something. Um, now it will. You know, if, if it's in this condition, you know, I might would pay $10, $15 for that reel. Um, because it's certainly not a collector piece. But it looks kind of cool, and I think it'll go good with the rod. So that's just kind of what I think about the reel. The rod I love, the reel, eh, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, for the time period and early Japanese reels, um, you know, it's... Let's see, made in Japan. I don't know if that'll show up on that video. But for the early Japanese reels, it's pretty much par for the course. Uh, it wasn't, but just maybe like, I'm guessing these were made in the 60s. Uh, just by the way it's put together. Now in, in the 70s, the, a lot of the Japanese companies really took off and started doing some awesome things. Uh, this was just a little before that period. Again, the materials are good. The quality of the materials are good. Uh, the gears and everything like that are cut well. It just needed some refinement and some of the small details uh, that they would come up with later. Companies like Daiwa and Shimano. But um, for the time period, this is pretty much par for the course on the early Japanese reels. Um, and they didn't have the greatest reputation, but a lot of them... Um, get lumped in. There's some that are nicer than others on the earlier ones. So anyway, I'm going to get this put on the rod and hopefully in the next video to come here, not too far off, I will be able to try this thing out and then I'm going to send it to one of you guys. So don't forget to comment on each of the videos because I'm going to pick a, a random video to draw a random comment from. So in the video series there's I think five videos if you comment on each one that increases your chances of winning because I might not if you didn't comment on one of the videos I might not pick draw that video to pick the random comment from hopefully that makes sense so make sure you comment on all the videos in the series if you'd like to have this rod and reel and I appreciate y'all checking out my channel and it's continuing to grow and I, I, I owe all that to you guys and I really appreciate it